गुड इवनिंग हाउ यू गाइज डूइंग हाई राम हेलो ईसन मगल हेलो जैद गुड इवनिंग हाउ यू गाइज डूइंग कैन यू ऑल सी एंड ह्योर मी क्लियरली यस कैन यू ड्रॉप इन अ ग्रीन हार्ट इफ यू कैन सी एंड ह्योर क्लियरली थैंक यू राम हेलो 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 आई होप यू गाइज आर ऑल ह्योर ओके एंड लेट मी जस्ट चेक लेट मी जस्ट चेक Hi Sonia good to see you Hello Yes thank you Thank you so much for letting me know and yeah Right great so we are here for sexual reproduction of flowering plants I guess this is the first session no this is the first session for all the ultra legends Yes nice to meet you too That's nice to see you Sonia Vinay हेलो कनाली नोबू पार्कर निशी डू नो हिंदी और आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड हिंदी बट दिस इज एन इंग्लिश चैनल सो आई बी टॉकिंग इन इंग्लिश येस हाय अरविंद हेलो मोहाइदीन हाय नीट एस्पिरेंट हेलो गुड टू सी यू पीपल ओके सो सिंस सिंस यू गाइस आर ऑल अल्ट्रा लेजेंड्स आई थॉट वी विल स्टार्ट द यू नो द एंटायर प्लान with sexual reproduction in flowering plants and today we are going to do the gametogenesis part okay so that is we are going to cover uh, how the gametes are produced in both the male as well as the female reproductive parts of a flower okay yes ultra legends absolutely all my 12th standard students here in enlita call as ultra legends yes hi zeba hi arvind hello bula Hi Kishore it's good to see you all i'm very very happy and we'll start okay now now the week quiz for this this uh, chapter okay all the portions that we're going to conduct today the week quiz is given here in the link okay niche hai you can you can check it out and you can attempt the week quiz and you can tag me right you can tag me after attempting the week quiz you can put it as a story you can tag me in uh, where is it mm I think it's Ashima Joshi. Okay, Ashima Joshi underscore B. Okay, you can tag me in this. I'll know. I can't damn you, you Nishi. Yes, digital diary. I I I remember actually. Jog fall student. Okay, so I think without much further uh, delay, because you guys are I think some of you are having a session at six o'clock with Shimon sir. So I don't want to delay any further. We will start with the session. Okay. Okay, right, 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 right. So we're going to start with sexual reproduction, flowering plants. I have to tell you, uh, I am in love with these slides because the colors are so beautiful. I think I should definitely have a shout out to my content uh, uh, person. Okay, so these slides are very, 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 very beautiful. You will see. Okay, as we go by, you will see. So yes, I'm going to start. Okay, you guys. What do you have to do? You have to listen to me, okay? You have to keep smashing the like button. I know you can do it only once, but go ahead, do it, and send in green hearts whenever you feel like. Okay, I have understood this part. Yes, will you do that? Yes, whenever you feel whatever I have explained, you have understood. You put in a green heart so that I know that what I'm I'm going in the right side. I mean, I'm going in the right track. Yes. Right. Hi, Vinod. Hello. Good evening. Okay. so flowers are the sites of sexual reproduction in flowering plants okay and that is how we start with the session that is how we introduce the chapter of sexual reproduction in flowering plants because we do have flowers just for the sake of reproduction okay and they're very 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 beautiful uh, what do you say organs of the plant right now the structure of flower is something we have all learned in our 11th morphology yes i don't have to repeat all of this i don't have to go into detail because we have learned about the flower in 11th okay and that too in the chapter morphology of flowering plants which will come up okay for the legends no yes you guys are ultra legends so i don't have to go in detail for the legends i will be taking morphology slowly so you can check that okay will you accept purple heart deal yes purple heart also can be accepted because flowers come in different colors no Yes. Oh God, you know, I'm having legends in ultra legend class. Okay, okay, unbelievable, but yeah. Right. Thank you. 
So the parts of the flowers basically we always start marking the parts of the flowers from the base. Okay. So here they have mentioned the stem. They have mentioned receptacle, which is also called as thalamus. Okay. Which is also called as thalamus. Okay. What is the thalamus? It's actually a stage-like structure. It's a, it's a bulged region from where all the floral walls are growing in. Right. So we have the receptacle that is the thalamus. And otherwise, we will start with the sepal. Okay, the floral whorl is called. Okay, the floral whorl can be called as calyx. Okay, which contains many sepals. And then just above that, we have we have our petal. Okay, the floral whorl here is called as corolla, which contains petals. Okay, and then we have our antrum, which is a male reproductive organ, which contains several stamens. Okay, and then we have our carpel. Okay, that is the floral wall is called as gynecium, right? So basic things that you need to know when we are starting is stamen has anther and filament. Okay, the top part is called as anther. That is where we'll have our pollen sacs and all of that. Okay, the re, uh, the main part. Hi, Tanima. And then you have the stalk of it called as the filament. Okay, so anther plus filament will become the uh, antrum or the stamen. And when it comes to the female part, we have stigma styled ovary. Okay, so we have stigma styled ovary. Yes. Oh, thank you, Vinod. Right. So we have stigma styled the ovary also, which are the parts of a carpel. Also, you can also call it as pistil. Okay. You can also call it as pistil. Now these are like the general information you need to know when we are going through this chapter. Okay. Hi Rahul. Right. Now, flowers are modified condensed reproductive shoots. So flowers, how are flowers formed? Normally, how is the shoot forming? I'll tell you. Okay. Normally we have the apical meristem. Okay. It'll keep growing and growing and growing. So at every node, it's supposed to make leaves. Yes, it's supposed to make leaves at the nodes and we have the internodes. Okay, that is how it normally grows. But the moment the plant decides, you know what, I think I'll just make a flower today. Okay, the moment they decide that they want to form a flower, okay, the growth of the stem will reduce. Okay, it's not going to have too much of internodes. It will grow a little bit from the calyx, grow a little bit from the corolla and rishim and gynecium. Now, instead of the nodes forming the leaves or axillary buds, now, because it is converted from shoot meristem to floral meristem, it will start forming floral whorls. Yes. Hi, Charu. Yes, absolutely. Hi, Nazim. Right. So, here, what are they saying? A typical flower has a broad base called as thalamus over which four whorls. Okay. Of floral leaves, see, they're calling it as floral leaves. Instead of leaves, now they have floral whorls. Okay, sepals, petals, uh, stamens and carpels are born. Okay, again, this is the same thing. Now, stamens and carpels represent the male and female reproductive structures and they're called as the essential floral parts or you can also call them as the necessary whorls. Okay, you can also call them as the necessary whorls. Hi, Abhinandan. Right, you can either call them as essential floral whorls or you can call them as necessary because they are directly involved. They are like, yes, we are, the, we are the ones who are doing the reproduction part. Okay, the main ones. The others, the calyx and corolla, they are called as accessories. They are like, ha, we will only help. Okay, we are not exactly involved in the process, but we will help you. So they call as accessory floral walls and these guys are called as the necessary floral walls. Okay? Right. Now, like I said, sepals and petals are called as the non-essential floral walls because they only have supportive roles. They are also called as accessory walls. Okay? Yes, German banana flowers are more fresh. Yes, exactly. Pradeep, got it. Now, 
Stamen has two parts. Like I said, this is something we already learned, right? Okay. So stamen has two parts: anther and the filament. Okay. And anther is actually the region where this, you know, the process of gametogenesis and the gamete transfer, everything happens from the anther. Okay. Uh, filament is long and slender. It is just helping them to attach the anther at a height. Okay. Uh, it is proximally attached to the thalamus, petal, or tepal. It has an anther distally. Okay. And the anther is bilobed. Now, what do you mean by bilobed? Yes. Let's see. What do you mean by bilobed? Bilobed means it has two lobes. Okay. Lobes or two structures are there. Right. So. Most of the anthers have a bilobed structure, okay? And inside each lobe, they have two theca, okay? So that is why they call us dithecus because they have two theca, two in each lobe, okay? So each lobe has two theca. So when you add so I'm telling you, one lobe will have two theca. You have two lobes. How many theca can you see in a normal anther? How many theca will be there? Can I know in the chat box? Yes? Can I know how many theca will be there on the whole? Yes. So if every lobe has two theca, when you add all of that, you will have around four theca. Right? So... Four theca you will be you will be having in the entire anther. Okay? Yes, very good. Four theca totally. Okay? Totally you will have four theca. And because these thikas can also have other names. Okay, let's write down the other names of theca. Okay, theca can also be called as microsporangia. Okay, it can also be called as microsporangia or it can also be called as pollen sacs. Okay, it can also be called as pollen sacs. So, it has two other names. Please learn this. Okay, uh, theca can also be called as microsporangia, the structure which has all the microspores and also it can be called as pollen sacs because it has the pollen grains inside them. So, when you call them as microsporangia, because there are four microsporangia, you call it as a tetrasporangiate structure. Yes, you call it as a tetrasporangiate structure. Why? Tetra means four. Got it? So since there are four microsporangia, you call it as a tetrasporangiate structure. Easy? Yes? If it's easy, can I see some green hearts? Green hearts, yes. Awesome. If you guys are not going to give me a green heart, I'll, I'll give it for myself. Okay, no worries. Alright, so now we learn about the anther. Yes, theca and microsporangia are the same thing. Okay. Now, anther is typically bilobed. Each lobe, each lobe has two theca. Its tetragonal has four microsporangia. See? In the sentence of your NCRT, it said, okay, it is, it is understood. So, anther is bilobed, each lobe has two theca, okay, that means totally it has four theca, that means four microsporangia. What does that mean? Theca and microsporangia are the same thing. Yes? Okay. Right. The two anther lobes separated by a deep groove. Where is the deep groove now? Okay, you see this structure? Okay, here there is a deep groove. That is where they are separating both the thikas. Okay. That, I mean both the lobes. This is one lobe. This is another lobe. Okay. Between them there is a deep groove which is separating them. Right. Now. Attached to either side by a sterile parenchymatous tissue called as connective on the posterior side. Okay. So now you have this deep groove. Okay. And other than that you also have this tissue here. Okay. This tissue here is your connective. Okay, this is your connective tissue which has vascular tissues in them. Okay, why vascular tissues? Because they also need food and water, no? So we have vascular connections to them. Got it? 
Now this that was a morphology. That was a morphology of how an anther will look like. From the outside, oh, it has two lobes, it has two theca, each and everything. Cool. Now we have to learn the anatomy also. Yes, we have to learn the anatomy also because we need to know what is happening inside. Okay, so for that we need to know the anatomy. Right? So anatomy, it has basically four layers. Okay, the outermost layer is the epidermis. Then we have endothelium. We have middle layers. Now epidermis and endothelium are like one one layer each. Okay. Now endothelium, sorry, middle layers are a few layers thick. Right. So these three together are going to help with the protection. Okay. What are they going to do? They are going to do protection. They are like the they are like the bodyguards. Okay. They are there just for protective detail or security detail. Okay. Now. Then inside, we also have the fourth layer, which is called a stapetum. Okay, it has certain functions. We will learn about it. So it's like how how will a VIP survive? Yes, it'll have they'll have their own uh, security guards and everyone. There'll be a person to cook and give food and everything. All the VIP has to do is to live and do what he or she does. The same thing here. Okay, so we have epidermis, endothelium, and middle layers. That's like the protection detail. Then we have stapetum, who's going to cook food and give for them. Okay, and inside we have the mega microspore mother cells, or also called as the sporogenous tissue. Okay, sporogenous tissue. Which are the VIPs? Okay, which are the VIPs? So outer three layers protect the young anther. Okay, and also helps in mechanism of dehiscence. Yes, that is when the anther is ready to give out the pollen grains, they'll help with that also. The wall layers, they'll dry up and then they'll crack. Once they crack, all of these pollen grains will be given out. Yes, the endothelium is also called as fibrous layer because of the presence of fibrous thickenings. So that means again, additional protection. Yes, additional strength. Okay, now. Functions of tapetum. I like I said, okay, they need to have their cook. They need to have somebody else also taking care of them. Okay, just protection is not enough. So the tapetal cells or tapetal cells uh, enlarge and become filled with dense protoplasmic content. Okay, dense protoplasmic content. What do you think will be there in this dense protoplasmic content? Okay, they are going to have a lot of proteins. Okay, they're going to have a lot of proteins and stored food. Okay, that is why the protoplasm is very, very thick. Okay, and uh, two types of tapetum are there, amoeboid and secretory. It depends. Amoeboid is because it has a lot of, uh, you know, amount of maybe uh, these protein secretory is when they secrete it out. Okay, so that depends. But anyways, that is too much of detail. You don't have to go into it. Functions of tapetum. This is something you have to understand. Okay, first thing it does is provide nourishment to the microspore mother cells. Okay, so basically... Food. Okay, they make yummy, 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 yummy food for the growing microspore mother cells or the ones they are forming the pollen grain. Hi, unique boy. Okay. Then it produces lipid rich ubish granules containing sporopollenin for exine formation of pollen. Okay. So when we learn about the structure of pollen, uh, you, you have already learned, in fact. Okay. So pollen grain is there uh, and it has this outer layer made up of sporopollen to make it extra strong. So that kind of substance is also given out by tapetum. Nourishing. Nourishing means uh, something which is giving food and making sure it has uh, a lot of nutrients. Okay. Giving nourishment is like giving nutrients. Okay. Right. So that is also there. The ubish granules, granules are there. To give that, uh, what do you say, to help make sporopollen on the enzyme, okay, which we will learn. Then we, it, excrete, uh, sorry, it secretes enzymes called, or that called as callase, okay. So what will callase do? I will write on what callase will do, okay. So callase enzyme breaks down. Callose sugar. That's why the name. Okay. Now where is callose sugar that I will teach you? Okay. Where is callose sugar that I will teach you? But what is the function of callase enzyme? It helps in breaking down or dissolving callose sugar as such. Okay. So callose wall around the pollen tetrad. 
Okay, where is the pollen tetrad coming? That also I will teach you. Okay, on the way, it's coming up. Like I said, okay. Now these are diagrams from your NCRT corner. Okay, NCRT book. Okay, so here you can actually have all the markings. Learn each and every diagram of the NCRT. It's very, very important. So here you have two lobes. Okay, this is one lobe and this is one lobe. Inside the two lobes, you have two to the cup. Okay, so that's how we have diathecus inside every lobe. Okay, connective tissue is there, epidermis, endothelium, uh, middle layers are mentioned here, tapetum is there, and then the sporogenous tissue is there. Okay, so this is your mature anther. Okay, mature when they are ready to dehyze. Okay, when they are ready to dehyze, this is how they dehyze. You see, these cells, okay, these wall layer cells, no, they become very dry. Okay, they become very dry and they pop. Di tika means two tikas. Di means two. Okay. Di means two and tika means some bag like structure or some uh, holding structure. Okay. Tika means a bag or a sack. Okay. So when there are two, yes. Awesome. 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 Okay. I just separated so that you guys won't get confused. Now. Microsporogenesis. Yes, now we are getting into action. We are going to learn how these beautiful gametes are made. Okay, male gametes should be made no, for sexual reproduction. So we learn. Dehyze means, dehyze means like I said, okay. Uh, now, for example, let's take, okay. If I am going to a park and there are a lot of uh, pigeons there. Okay, so I want to give uh, breadcrumbs. So I'm bringing them in a bag. Okay, so now if I have to get my breadcrumbs out of the bag, what do I have to do? I have to burst or tear the paper bag. Okay, or whatever bag I have. Yes, I have to tear it open, right? So that is how they also have a lot of pollen grains inside. They have to tear it for it to come out. They have to release it. Yes, that's why it's called as dehyze. Okay, dehiscence is called as releasing. Yes, two lobes. Yes, I showed you the two lobes. It's there in the beginning. Okay, Chandramauli. Cool. So now we'll get into microsporogenesis. The process of formation of microspores. Okay. Hi, Saksham. Long time. Okay. From a pollen mother cell through the through process of meiosis and several other division is called as microsporogenesis. Okay. Making microspores basically. All right. Sporogenous tissue. We found sporogenous tissue, no? We had the wall layers. Epidermis, endothelium, middle layers, tapetum. Inside the tapetum, we had our sporogenous tissue. So, these sporogenous tissue, which are deployed, okay, undergo meiotic divisions to form microspore tetrads, okay. Tetrads means they have four of them. Hi, Jaydev. Okay, so you see here, this is one microsporocyte. Or you can call it as uh, sporogenous tissue. You can call it as pollen mother cell. Okay. You can call it as pollen mother cell. Okay. Which is diploid. This diploid will undergo meiosis. You see meiosis 1, meiosis 2 is happening. Okay. Now you have 4 cells. Okay. Each of which are haploid now. Each of these are haploid. It forms a tetrad. Okay, tetrad means they are sticking together. They are like, okay, let's let's just, you know, I know we have divided and all, but don't go too far. Okay, just stay, stay with me, stick with me. Okay, they will stick to each other. Okay, they will stick to each other and they are sticking to each other with the help of something called as callos. Okay, they are sticking to each other with the help of callos. It will help them form one unit. Okay, so callos is there to stick them together and form a tetrad. Right? And it's all cool now. It's all cool now. Yeah, this is there for me to just draw the flowchart. I'll, I'll draw the flowchart for you. Okay? Now that will undergo division later. But again, let's talk about the mature oak. Oh, or wait. Pollen grain let it be wait, waiting. Okay. Now you see. Here. Uh, okay. Let me just finish off the process then. Okay, I'll, I'll draw. Uh, I'll draw. Okay, I'll draw the flowchart for you people. So it'll be easier. Okay. Hmm. Which color do I start with? Green it is. Okay, so we're going to start with sporogenous tissue. If you guys can st uh, start writing along with me, it'll be great. Okay, sporogenous tissue. Okay, 
So we're going to learn about microsporogenesis. Huh? The heading is going to be microsporogenesis. Okay, and we're going to start with sporogenous tissue, which is diploid. Okay, it'll undergo, uh, actually it'll undergo development. So let's keep it as a little bit of development here. Okay, it'll undergo development and it will form the pollen mother cell. Okay, I'm writing short form here. You guys can write the whole thing. Cool, okay. So pollen mother cell is there, which is also deployed only. Which is giving another name. You can also call it as the microspore mother cell. Okay, MMC, microspore mother cell. Okay, it will undergo division and it will form the tetrad. Okay, tetrad of microspores. Yes, they have divided and how do they divide? They divided by meiosis. Yes, meiotic divisions are there. Four, you've got four. Tetrad of microspores, matlab, you've got four of them. Four into haploid. Okay, now this will have this callous, callous sugar, like I said, they're sticking to each other. Right now, slowly the stapetum is there. Okay, we have stapetum releasing callase. Yes, the stapetum will release callase enzyme. I told you, callase enzyme will dissolve the callose. Yes, so this callase enzyme will dissolve callose. And separate the structure. Okay. They will separate the structure into four separate microspores. Okay, you get separate microspores, which are haploid each. Okay, they're all stuck to each other. Four of them stuck to each other. Okay, now I'm going to put in some callase enzyme and I'm going to separate them. Okay, so now you have four separate microspores. And like that, you'll have numerous. I'm not going to say it's just going to be four. You're going to have you're going to have thousands or even millions of pollen grains inside the pollen sac. Okay. Now, where is all of this happening? It's happening in each of the theca. It's happening in each of the microsporangia. Okay. You should know where it is happening also. Yeah. Now, microspores are there. Is the process over? No. These microspores are, you know, cells which have a nuclei inside. Okay. Haploid cells. They're very happy. No, that's not enough. Okay, this has to undergo division. Okay, it will undergo division and it will form the two cell pollen grain. Okay, two cell pollen grain. Okay, the two cell pollen grain are going to have, that means there are going to be two cells. Now let's name the two cells. Okay, we'll put names also to those two cells. One is going to be vegetative cell. Okay. One vegetative cell and one generative cell. Okay, one vegetative cell and one generative cell. This is after mitosis. Okay, here we are having mitosis, not meiosis. Meiosis is once, that's it, done. Okay, here we have mitosis, equational division. So there's not going to be any change in the Ploidy. Okay, so we are just still going to have haploid, haploid cells. Okay, this is haploid, this is going to be haploid. Alright, now out of this, what happens is this generative cell will undergo mitosis again. Okay, it will undergo mitosis and then it will form the three cell pollen grain. Okay, three cell mature pollen grain. Now, how will that three cells be? It's going to have one vegetative cell, okay, or tube cell, and it will have two male gametes, okay, it will have two male gametes. Yes, so vegetative cell and generative cell will be there. Out of that, this generative cell alone will divide. The vegetative is like, ha, huh, I'm fine. Okay, don't disturb me. The generative cell is like, no, 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 this is not enough. We have to make two male gametes. 
okay and it will become two male gametes right again by what division it's going to be mitosis only okay it's going to be by mitosis and now you have formed the okay you have formed the mature pollen grain yes this guy here is your mature pollen grain yes hi danush yes one generative cell is there okay that's a chotu wala cell vegetative cell is big okay generative cell is chotu wala cell and that chotu wala generative cell will again divide and form the two male gametes and this is your mature pollen grain okay i guess i'll have to so we start with sporogenesis tissue meiosis forming the microspores which is called as microsporogenesis now the microspores will undergo division again mitosis is there you form the vegetative and generative cell okay the generative cell will again divide and form the three cell stage okay two male gametes one vegetative cell two male gametes that is your mature pollen grain hi pranal hello manish okay great super so this is a flow chart i always draw for all my students so i thought i'll do it for you people also my long term students must be knowing this okay they must be used to this yes ultra legends okay so we have got the mature pollen grain now we we'll learn the structure okay pollen grains represent the male gametophyte like how we learned uh, we learned the theca or pollen sac has another name called as microsporangia here also the pollen grains are called as a male gametophytes okay because gametophyte means anything anything that contains the male gamete is called as male gametophyte right now pollen grains are 25 to 50 micrometer in diameter they have wall coverings okay called as a sporoderm okay it has the outer exine and inner intine okay inner intine right okay exine is an exine is a hard very hard outer wall made up of sporopollenin who is giving the materials for sporopollenin tapetum yes so sporopollenin how is it from tapetum okay or with the help of tapetum yes so they are all helping each other out it's a huge process right so sporopollenin is an it's a it's very highly resistant okay it's one of the strongest organic material on the earth okay what does it do it is not degraded by any enzyme it's like oh i'm too strong okay and then it is not affected by high temperature strong acid strong alkalis like huh, i don't worry about all of that yes yes nazim i will put it in the telegram group i have not i i'll put it up soon okay i'll put it up in the telegram group yes nourishment also it does it has multiple functions that's what we learned okay it does nourish it gives nourishment it uh, helps in producing calase enzyme it also helps in producing sporopollenin three three functions are there for tapetum okay now we also have the intine yes the intine is there let me tell you a little bit about our intine the intine is made up of normal normal cell wall material that is our cellulose okay and pectin yes so the intine is made up of cellulose and pectin normal but sporopollenin is like super strong okay it's like ha huh, acid come on i'll i'll punch you no problem okay i'll still fight it okay alkali i'll still fight it high temperature that is also no problem okay so pretty strong material and you can see the exine also has a lot of designs okay it has a lot of designs also and they very very creative like that okay mature pollen grains has two cells vegetative and generative cell okay now thank you nazim right so this is this is a stage in over 60% of plants okay in 60% of plants okay pollen grains are released at two cell stage okay so most of the plants are like you know what bahut ho gaya okay done i did meiosis for you i did one more mitosis for you i can't do one more okay so you get it released at two cell stage right now there is another 40% plants are like no 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 we can't do it okay we need to make it completely mature only then we will release okay so you see here 
this stage no 60% of the plants they release the pollen at the two cell stage okay they say this is enough and baki to they will take care of later okay yes chandra now the other 40% plants like okay you know what we'll do one more mitosis we will make it ready okay we'll make it the major you know the mature pollen grain and then we will release it okay so it's always a constant fight also they like okay you know what because of that i am better than you i am better than you it goes on right so we have the vegetative cell bigger it has food reserve large irregularly shaped nucleus okay generative cell is small spindle shaped the cell itself is spindle shaped okay the cell itself is spindle shaped with dense cytoplasm and a nucleus this will again divide later okay thank you so much everything in one love you too okay so young pollen grain has a centrally placed nucleus embedded in dense cytoplasm covered by a plasma membrane okay great now this pollen grain will grow in size develop vacuole protoplast and divide mitotically to form two unequal cells generative cell and a vegetative cell again like i said we've already done this okay so we have the vegetative cell we have the generative cell okay pollen grains are shared two cell stage or three cell stage yes so this is in 60% of the plants and three cell stage in 40% of the plants okay 60% of the plants release it at two cell and 40% at three cell got it got it where are my green hearts come on did you guys understand what i'm saying I'm waiting for you people. Okay, come on, people, some green hearts in the chat box. Good, 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 good. Okay, super. Now these pollen grains can also be very, 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 very problematic to humans. Okay, they can cause severe allergies and bronchial afflictions to some people. So there are some people who can get easily uh, allergic to dust and stuff, uh, you know, substances like that. So at that time, pollen grains can be a problem. Okay. now it can cause it can cause serious chronic respiratory disorders like asthma bronchitis and parthenium okay parthenium or carrot grass is a very problematic plant okay this carrot grass plant it came into india as a contaminant with imported wheat okay it has become ubiquitous in occurrence that means they just live everywhere okay it has become an invasive weed in fact okay it has become an invasive weed you find it growing everywhere in every corner of our country right so it has become and causes pollen allergy also so this is parthenium okay it is now it's now declared as a pretty much invasive weed okay and nobody can get rid of it okay nice now that we learned about the disadvantage of pollen it can cause allergies but there are people okay because they are rich in nutrients there are people there are human beings who take uh, pollen grains as food supplements okay they collect pollen grains convert them into capsules or tablets and they take them as food supplements because it has high proteins and everything okay now in western countries a large number of pollen products are there tablet syrups etc and yes okay and they can eat it also pollen consumption has been claimed to increase the performance of athletes and race horses also okay so it can be given as a high protein content okay because uh, yes it can help with other i mean uh, abilities so athletes sorry athletes and uh, horses they need a lot of power they need a lot of energy okay so that can be given by these pollen grains yes yes nazim accord along with that okay this guy is also there this parthenium is also there okay now this is on ncert page 24 okay let's just read through and i'll tell you what is important here now when once they are shed pollen grains have to land on the stigma okay stigma is there on the female part no okay so this is there on the carpel before they lose viability what is viability that is they have a time limit okay when they are active before they lose uh, viability means activeness okay or being active or alive even okay 
Poem kit is the one that contains all this, uh, you know, pollen grains, either as tablets or syrups or whatever. Okay, I think that's just the company name. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Now, they have to bring about fertilization. They have to do this. The pollen grain has to land on the stigma. Okay. Hello, Arun. Yes. How long do you think the pollen grains remain or retain viability? How long do you think they'll be active? It depends. Okay, the pollen... Uh, the time limit, okay, it's very, very valuable in some cereals, okay, it depends on the environment also, yes, it depends on the environment as well, but you see there are some, you know, there's some amount, so in some cereals such as rice and wheat, they lose viability within 30 minutes, okay, so 30 minutes, it's like mission impossible, do or die, okay, the pollen grains land on the stigma, if they don't, done. Okay, so it's kind of problematic. It's a, it's, a, it's a race always. Okay, life is always a race. Now, yeah. So, 30 minutes of the release and some members of Rosaceae, Leguinosae and uh, Solanaceae, they have viability for months. So they're like, ha, you know what, we can chill around a little bit and then go again. Go ahead. Okay, so they maintain viability for, uh, for a longer period of time. Now, uh, storing semen or sperms of many animals, including humans, for artificial insemination is there. Yes, we can. We can do artificial insemination in plants and in animals. Okay. So, for the same reason, we can store pollen grains of large number for years. Okay. So, uh, how do they do it? They do it by cryopreservation or storing them in liquid nitrogen at 196 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, that is called as cryopreservation. Okay, it's called as cryopreservation. Yes, and that helps a lot. Cryopreservation is uh, there. Okay, it can be done. Right. So, yes. In crop breeding programs and everything, for later hybridization proce uh, processes or anything, we can use this. Now, we will learn about the female reproductive structure. So, we learned how the male gametes are produced, microsporogenesis there, we've made the gametes, all good. Now, let's see, let's see the female part of it. Okay, let's see the female part of it. Yes. So, gynecium is a female part, like I said, it has three parts, stigma, style and ovary. Yes, stigma, style and ovary is there. Okay, it is uh, terminal or at the tip. Terminal means at the tip. Receptive part, okay, this will receive the pollen grains. Why is it called as a recessive part? Because uh, it is from, I mean, it is the region where they receive the pollen grains, okay, as a landing platform for pollen grains. Then, the style. Style is the elongated slender part beneath the stigma that connects the stigma to the ovary. Okay, it's there only for connecting. So, stigma is there, ovary is there, it has to connect, no? This is your style part. And then we have the ovary. Yes, ovary is the bulged, basal bulged part. Inside the ovary, we have the ovarian cavity, which is the locule. Okay, placenta is also there. Locule, placenta, placentation. Again, go back to refer your morphology of flowering plants. Okay, we have learned this all in morphology. Okay, so we don't have to repeat this again. Okay, Arun, you come to V Master channel at 9 o'clock today. I will talk in Tamil. Okay, why five words? The entire one hour I'll talk in Tamil. Okay, Arun? Yes. So, from the placenta, megasporangia arises. Megasporangia is your ovule. Okay, you have to know the names, people. You have to know the names. Pollen sac, microsporangia, and tika is the same thing. The same way, megasporangia and ovule is the same thing. Okay? Yes. Commonly, commonly called as ovules. The number of ovules can change. Okay, you can have one ovule inside an ovary to many, 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 many ovules. Okay, that can change. Now, there are two types of gynecium basically. Uh, we have monocapillary and multicapillary. Okay, so by is there. Okay, having two, but usually we give the name as monocapillary and multicapillary. Now, under multicapillary, mul mono means one carpel in a flower and multi means more than two. Yes, now. Syncarpus is when you have these, this multicarpary has two types. Okay. Multicarpary will have two types. Multicarpary can have syncarpus condition or it can have apocarpus condition. Okay. Syn means always together. Sync. 
sinking together. Okay, so we have syn carpus and we have apo carpus or free steam. I mean free pistils. Okay, awesome Arun. Right, so free pistils are the fused pistils. Examples, examples are important. Okay, examples of monocarpary, multicarpary is important. Hibiscus, papaver or poppy. Okay, and here we have oleander as the example for apocarpus. Okay, now, yeah, these are the diagrams in your NCRT. Here they are showing you the structures. Yes, so a uh, dissected flower of hibiscus without the stamens, they are showing they are showing only the gynoecium, stigma, stere, ovary. Okay, and then we have B, which is showing multi-carpillary pistil of papaver. Okay. And here we have multi-carpity apocarpus of mycelia. Yes, so that's also an, another example. Okay. Uh, mycelia. Okay. And then we have diagrammatic view of typical anthrot. Sorry, anatopus ovule. Anatopus is one type of ovule. Okay. So in the ovule, we have different, different parts. So we have the ovule. Ovule is our megasporangium. Okay. Megasporangium is there. It has inside we have the mega gametophyte or the female gametophyte. Okay, embryo sac is the female gametophyte. Okay, now structure of ovule. This is very, 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 very important. Okay, I know there are many, many things written here, but first you listen to me. Okay. Uh, if you listen to me, we will make this very, 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 very easy. Right? Now, we all know there is funicle. Okay? We have placenta. Placenta is there. Placenta, funicle, hilum and then the integuments and inside we have the structure. Okay? Now, the best way to learn that is using your arm. Okay? I always teach this to the students. So, imagine, imagine this is the ovule. Okay? My, my hands, my fingers here are forming the ovule. Now, this ovule has to be attached to the mother plant. Okay, imagine I'm the mother plant. If it has to be attached to the mother plant, you attach it with the help of placenta. Okay, so my upper arm is going to be the placenta. Okay, the ovule attaching to the ovary or the mother plant, that region is called as placenta. Okay, now the ovule, if it, the region where it is attaching to the placenta and forming a stalk, Okay, this region is called as a funicle. Right? Yes, Nazim. It's there, it's there. V master is there. Vidantu master channel for Tamil students. Okay? So, we have the placenta. Okay? Attaching the ovule to the mother, uh, uh, mother part. And we have the funicle, which is a stalk attaching the ovule to the placenta. Okay? So, we have placenta, we have funicle and the ovule is there. Now, the region where the ovule is going to attach to the funicle. That region, your wrist region, okay? That region is called as your hilum. Okay? That region is called as your hilum. Now, you see, if I extend this diagram, okay? If I extend this diagram, this is your placenta. Okay? And this entire stalk is called as a funicle. Okay? It's called as a funicle. Now, the region where the funicle and the entire ovule is attached, Okay, this region where the funicle is attached to the ov ovule, okay, that's called as your hilum. Yes, it will come up nothing soon. Right, so we have the placenta, we have the funicle, we have the hilum and then we have the ovule. Okay, we have the ovule. And then inside the ovule we have these coverings, no, these extra coverings. Okay, these extra coverings are called as integuments. We have outer and inner integuments just for protecting the structure. Okay, so you see here, stock of the ovule is funicle, point of attachment of funicle to body is called as hilum. Okay, body of ovule shows two ends, it has telazole and micropylar end. Now you can see in this diagram, okay, there is one end where it's a little open. Okay, it's a little open. So that region, okay, this region is called as the micropyle. Okay, they are little open where they don't have the integuments, right? The opposite side of which is called as a chalazal pole or the chalaza. Okay, opposite to micropyle you have the chalaza. Okay, and then yes, they are covered with on, on what's called as integuments, micropyle is open. Okay, 
and the integuments inside okay inside you have some structures okay like for example let's do purple okay so here this entire tissue okay this entire tissue is your new cells so inside the integuments you have a mass of cells called as a new cells okay you can yes uh, harshita you can definitely try there is no eligibility for trying for the second time okay don't worry right so you have the new cells also okay now new cells is very much like our sporogenous tissue right so new cells is there uh the new cells store abundant reserve food materials the embryo sac of the female gametophyte is located inside the new cells okay so we have all the parts starting with placenta then we have our funicle hilum is there and then we have the integuments covering the entire structure of the ovule inside the integuments you have new cells one side where the integuments are not covering that side is called as the micropyle the other side is called as a chalaza okay now let's hold on to the new cells for a while right we will learn about megasporogenesis okay we will we will talk about megasporogenesis the process of formation of megaspores from megaspore mother cell is called as megasporogenesis okay so again here we have meiotic division i think i will draw the same uh, flow chart for you people yes can you drop in some likes can you drop in some likes we are going to start with the uh, what do you say flow chart here for megasporogenesis okay so we all know about new cells okay we all know about new cells so we have new cells inside the integuments which is diploid just like how we start with sporogenous tissue okay this new cells will only become the megaspore mother cell which is our diploid cells okay now this megaspore mother cell will be selected so new cells is a mass of tissue many many tissues are there out of that one of them will be selected okay there's only one being selected which is our megaspore mother cell okay now this megaspore mother cell one single cell it is it will undergo meiosis and it will form a tetrad of megaspores okay so 4 into n yes because here we have meiosis yes after meiosis hi ala hello okay so we have a tetrad of megaspores it can be in different different sizes shapes whatever but we do have our megaspores okay four of them are there out of the four actually three will degenerate okay they like again they'll select we don't need all the four of you we only need one okay so out of the four one will become the megaspore okay there will be one functional megaspore and the other three will degenerate okay they will degenerate that means they'll just die off okay they'll just die off so we have the new cells which is a mass of cells inside the integuments out of that there will be one cell taken okay one diploid cell will be selected okay this one diploid cell will undergo meiosis it will form four cells okay four cells four haploid cells are made now out of these four cells three of them will get degenerated okay it will be broken it will be degenerated you will have one functional megaspore okay you will have one functional megaspore which is our uh, main guy okay now this one this one functional megaspore will undergo mitotic division hello vishnu yes 
So it will undergo mitotic divisions. Yes. And. Yes. Mm, yeah. So they will undergo mitosis. And they will form two cell stage. Okay. Two celled embryo sac. Once more mitosis form four cell embryo sac and once more mitosis to form the eight or I would say nucleus. Okay, eight nuclei because there is only nuclear division happening. Okay, only nuclear division is happening. One second. Only nuclear division is happening. The cell is not being divided. Okay. So, I would say, I would use the word nucleate. Okay. Two nucleate. Four nucleate. And eight nucleate embryo sac. Okay. Because there are three sets of mitosis. Okay. There are three sets of Mitosis happening. Okay, so here we have mitosis. Here we have mitosis. And here again we have mitosis. Yes. So three, three levels or three sets of mitosis. Okay, my name is Ashima Ala. Okay. So this is how we form the eight nuclear embryo sac. Which is, which is our mature uh, female gametophyte. Okay, what is this? This 8 nucleid embryo sac is only our mature embryo sac or mature female gametophyte. Okay, female gametophyte, right? This is very similar to what we learned in microsporogenesis, okay? So, the same way you can learn this also, right? Let's see. You can see, monosporic or polygonum type is when you, you select one, yes? Out of the four mag megaspores, we selected only one. So, you call it as monosporic type, okay? So, again, three successive minority divisions give rise to an eight nucleate embryo sac. Okay, four nuclei at the micropylar end and the other four at the chalazid end. Okay, so you have four nuclei here, four nuclei here. Okay, yes. Out of that, so we have eight nuclei inside, no? Okay, so we have eight nuclei. So, you see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Out of that, only one nuclei will become the egg cell. Okay? This will be your egg cell. Egg nuclei. And it will later form the cell. Egg cell. Okay? This is entirely inside. This, this entire structure here, this is your embryo sac. Okay? How do we learn in pollen grains? In pollen grains, we learn that it has... Three cells, no? One vegetative cell and two male gametes. The same way here, we have the entire embryo sac, okay? It has eight nuclei and one of that is our egg cell. The others have other functions, which we will learn. Yes, Kaleshali, what is your doubt? Okay? So, you can see here, the embryo sac has seven cells and eight nuclei. The egg apparatus, okay? Egg apparatus has three cells. One is the egg cell, okay? So, this is the one. And it has vacuole and upper end, prominent nucleus and all. Yes. They have two synergids. Okay. So, they have two cells here. They have filiform apparatus helping the pollen tube and all. Okay. And to guide the pollen tube. Then they have polar nuclei. Yes. Polar nuclei. The central cell is one cell. Okay. But they are two nuclei. Right. So, binucleate means you have two nuclei okay you have two nuclei but only one cell okay two nuclei is there just one cell so you can see here this entire cell no if i take uh, this entire cell this is one cell but it has two nuclei central cell okay 
सेंट्रल सेल विथ टू न्यूक्लिया ओके सेंट्रल सेल विथ टू न्यूक्लिया दैट्स आर पोलर सेल ओके टेंथ में हूं क्या मुझे बायो फ्लेम यू लर्न इट इन ट्वेल्थ ओके दिस इज फॉर ऑल टू आर लेजेंड नो राइट एंड देन वी हैव थ्री सेल्स ओके सो हियर वी हैव वन सेल वन प्लस टू इज थ्री थ्री प्लस वन इज फोर सेल्स एंड अनादर थ्री सेल्स हियर ओके द एंटीपोडल्स आर अनादर थ्री सेल्स ओके सो वन प्लस टू थ्री फोर एंड फोर प्लस थ्री सेवन सेल्स यस सो यू कैन सी हियर सेवन सेल बट इफ यू काउंट द न्यूक्लियाई ओके इट विल बी अ डिफरेंट नंबर सो वन प्लस टू थ्री थ्री प्लस थ्री सिक्स एंड टू न्यूक्लियाई ओके सो दैट विल बिकम एट न्यूक्लियाई right okay so we have either seven cell or eight nucleate structure that is your mature embryo sac cool yes so you can see here this is how they are forming this is your mature embryo sac so we have antipodes three cells are there at the chalazal end you have the polar nuclei two of them inside and you have the central cell okay and then we have the egg abacus which contains egg and the synergids together Okay, two synergids are there. Into the synergids, you have the filiform apparatus. Okay, so yes, this is your mature female gametophyte or embryo sac. Okay, this is called as monosporic because there is only one partial megaspore forming this entire structure. Okay, how children will come? This is plant reproduction, no Ria? Yes. How children will come? You have to ask your zoology teacher. Yes, Sindhu ma'am will take human reproduction. Then she will tell you. Okay. Now talking about how. Okay, so Ria has asked how will children come, or if you have so many more doubts. Okay, because in YouTube sessions it's kind of difficult to cover the entire topic, right? So, what do we have? We have our niche English courses. Okay, this is for all of you people who want to try and join. you know have a proper schedule and say okay you know what i will study all the subjects properly give tests okay give assignments like i want to really prepare for neat okay definitely bioflames i will do that okay in that case we do have our neat english batches with shivan sir hemin sir tarun sir dinesh sir and ambika ma'am i'm telling you these are the best teachers in the world okay these are really amazing 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 teachers yes Yes, there might be people who are already studying in Vedanta, and they might be, you know, agreeing with me because yes, these are the amazing teachers, and they have so many years of experience. So you can join these courses. You have multiple options. Okay, either you can join as a ProLite member, or ProLite is for AI. Okay, AI is where the master teachers are not live, but you will have class teachers to solve your doubts, and you'll have tests, assignments, and all the other facilities of Vedanta given to you. Okay. Yes, Tanima. I know that. Okay. Now, other than that, if you are, if you want to join the live classes, okay, live online classes, then yes, okay, you can join the live pro or even live classic is there. Yes, that's awesome, Ria. Me too. Me too. Me too. I am also a big fan of Shimon sir. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Ria. Thank you, Ethan Magan. Okay, so these are all. Like I said, you get the class recordings. You miss out one class, you still get the replay. Okay, in class doubt will be solved, feedbacks will be there, interaction will be there with the teachers. Okay, class notes will be given to you. All the PDF will be sent. I mean, it will be there in your profile automatically. Okay, assignments, tests, revision and test series. Okay, these are things that we cannot, you know, we cannot provide you in YouTube. at least these are all the things okay and when we have higher number of students in the session we will not be able to take the doubts also in youtube okay but when you join vedanto it's like for like proper neat coaching you know process it's like a proper process it's not like you know here and there or anything okay so that's like a proper process where you can have a you know continuous coaching for the entire year okay that is the benefit actually and we also give you the VIP promise that is our Vedantu improvement promise. Okay, thank you. Right, so this is where we have certain tests. Okay, and this is a reminder to all of my students, to all of my students who are already in Vedantu, give the LPTs. Okay, give the LPTs. Right, so learning progress tests are there. There are three learning progress tests. With the help of that, we will be able to, you know, understand 
how much you have rank or what is the rank you'll be getting and with the help of that we can also go through with the vidantu uh, improvement promise okay so if you have a good attendance and you know if you attend the tests and the marks okay collectively then we are telling you if you join vidantu pakka 100% we are promising you that you will definitely improve that is the vidantu improvement process okay promise so in case in case you do not improve we will give you the money back okay the complete course fee will be refunded to you okay yes it but don't forget okay i have to you know for this for getting you your money back i have to run behind the students saying get give your lpts give your lpts ha huh, that right okay so yes this is there for 12 okay so we do have we do have three lpts on the basis of that we will be able to give you your rank also yes it's called as a rank predictor test okay join karna must hai kya aisa nahi hai bio flames it depends okay if you really want to get into neat we will definitely help you you have a lot of facilities there okay yes super now in case you want to join these classes okay we have a coupon coupon code asje pro you can utilize the coupon code and get discounts okay in the courses so yes you can get it the pro light you can get it for 43560 for this entire year okay it will include your uh, pdfs it will include your notes it will include your classes your doubts okay you'll have other fun sessions also with the teachers so it's like a whole package okay thank you riya फैसिलिटीज तो है एग्जैक्टली सी जेड इज फ्रॉम माई क्लास ओनली दैट इज वाई तो ये दिस इज योर कूपन कोड राइट एंड इफ यू गाइज आर न्यू टू दिस चैनल एंड यू फील लाइक ओके मैम देर इज इंट एनी बडी हु इज एक्सप्लेनिंग यू नो ऑल द टॉपिक्स इन इंग्लिश ये वी हैव दिस एनली चैनल इज फॉर ऑल द जे एंड नीड स्टूडेंट्स हु वॉन्ट्स टू लर्न द टॉपिक्स इन इंग्लिश ओके बिकॉज देर आर सो मेनी चैनल्स फॉर हिंदी एंड यू नो यू माई नॉट ऑलवेज अंडरस्टैंड हिंदी and also the english language as such is very important because your ncert is in english okay you guys who are studying in english mediums your ncert is in english and you saw how many words i had to explain all right so learning english words can be little troublesome and in our exam also we saw this year that you need to understand the question okay to understand the english in the question it takes so much of effort okay so that's why we have come up with our english channel and you can like and subscribe and also share it with your other friends okay which will help us also a lot right for any further queries you have we do have our telegram channel you can join the channel i'll put in the pdf of this okay and we will meet in the next session okay so next class i think we will go for gamete transfer okay pollination and all of that it's going to be a very very interesting session next okay so see you all people i think we do have another session i mean she wants her session is there at 6 o'clock so see you all next week okay take care bye bye all of you bye bye and definitely some green hearts for you people where is it where is it where is it ah yes green hearts for you people okay thank you priya take care people bye bye see you all soon very very soon